brain evolved to help us stay safe from danger. But our brain can't always tell the difference between danger and stress. When your brain is really stressed and thinks you're in danger, it responds by trying to help you stay safe. This is your fight, flight, freeze and fawn response. So, if a bear wanted to eat you, you might fight the bear, run away from the bear, that's flight, freeze and hope it doesn't see you, that's your hiding response, or fawn, which is kind of like trying to convince the bear not to eat you. Or sometimes being really cute, like a cute little puppy with big eyes. Oh, oh but I digress. So what does this have to do with anxiety? Anxiety is complex. So we're making it simple by talking about three parts of your brain that are involved in this stress response. The first part is your brainstem, or your survival brain. Your survival brain is responsible for your body. Things like your breath, your heart rate, movement and exercise, your sleep, and the list goes on. Basically, the stuff that helps you stay alive. The second part is your limbic system, or your emotional brain. It's responsible for your emotions. <laughs> Duh. The third part of your brain is your frontal lobe. It's responsible for higher functioning thinking. Stuff like reading, writing, communicating and solving problems. When you're stressed and your brain thinks you're in danger, it triggers the fight, flight, freeze, fawn response by sending extra energy to your survival brain and body so you can be fast and strong or run away and fight danger. And sending extra energy to your emotional brain because emotions help us decide the best way to respond. All that extra energy has to come from somewhere. Your smart brain goes temporarily offline because if a bear was about to eat you, you wouldn't need to know how to do algebra or speak French. So this means that energy can be redirected to your survival and emotional brain. Temporarily, of course. The good news is once you're safe and calm down, everything in your brain returns to normal. We live in a world that's full of stress. So stuff like homework or fighting with friends can still trigger our fight, flight, freeze or fawn response. Like if you had some stressful homework to do, you might get angry and irritable. That's your fight response. You might feel panicked. That's your flight response. You might procrastinate or avoid it. That's your freeze response. Or you might try to talk your way out of having to do it, either to someone else or in your head. And that is your fawn response. The good news is there are some brain hacks that can help you to calm down. Brain hack number one. If you can calm down your body, this can help you calm down your brainstem or survival brain. You can do this by doing things with your body. You might use your breath, go for a run, or have a shower. Brain hack number two. If you can calm down your thoughts, you can calm down your limbic system or emotional brain. You can do this by doing things with your thoughts, like visualizations, meditation, and mindfulness. Brain hack number three. Turn your frontal lobe, or smart brain, back on. You can do this by doing things your smart brain is good at, like talking to a counsellor, reading a book, or writing your thoughts down. Calming yourself down takes practice. To get really good at managing stress, you have to practice a lot of times in order to grow the brain cells, connect them together, and create a whole new pathway in your brain. But the more you practice, the stronger the pathway gets until it becomes easier or even automatic. <laughs>